hey you guys welcome back to my channel so we're gonna jump right into this because it's a little bit of a lengthy video so as you can tell by the title i am going to be showing you guys how i make my wigs with a closure i'm using a free part closure and two bundles this hair was provided to me by ali queen on aliexpress and they sent me their free part closure it's a four by four closure and it's pre-plucked as you can see in the front i absolutely love that because it's the easiness of constructing a closure wig which in my opinion is 10 times easier than constructing a frontal wig 10 times easier um when it comes to applying your wig but it gives you the look of a frontal in the front they sent me a 16 inch free part closure, a 14 inch and a 12 inch bundle in order for me to create this long blunt bob. So as you can see, I basically line up my closure in the middle and I use T-pins to hold down the front, the back and the two sides. what i can say um is that i absolutely love this closure it was not too thick um but it was dense enough of course the pre-plucked hairline in the front was my absolute favorite i think um my the closure is probably my favorite thing about this hair in all honesty so as you can see now i'm going ahead and i'm just stitching around the perimeter of the closure now by no means guys am i a professional this is just how i do it i'm not perfect by any means but if this happens to work for me and the clients that i've made wigs for so hopefully this is a little bit of insight for you guys what i like to do is i like to stitch down one side and i bring it to one side of the t-pin in the middle so i like to do side to side and join them up in the middle if that makes sense so i'm going to stitch this all the way around to where the middle t-pin is and then i'll go on the next side stitch from the bottom come up all the way to where the middle t-pin is and it ensures that um you don't get any lumps and bumps or uneven stitching in your closure. It helps to keep it nice and flat, flat. Closure on, what's that? Hey. Now that both sides have been stitched, I'm showing you it lines up perfectly in the center and both sides are stitched from top to bottom in the exact same motion so i've just tucked our hair away so that this way it can get started on sewing in the bundles so here we have two bundles 14 and 12. i love to buy um long lengths when doing a blunt bob only to ensure that everything flows smoothly so I put the 12 on the bottom, then the 14, and then I have my 16 inch closure. And that's gonna ensure that everything flows in one direction. There's no layering and no choppiness. So right here, I'm just showing you that the weft construction of this hair wasn't the greatest. I didn't like that it had pink thread in there. Um, the weft was like a little bit, like the stitching wasn't tight. Um, and it was a little bit uh, snagging in certain areas. So that was definitely um, a con for me on this hair. The um, weft construction wasn't the greatest. Um, the texture initially of this 613 hair. Now, I haven't used a lot of 613 hair. This was my first time using 613. And I can honestly say um, the hair felt rough initially the initial texture of the hair was pretty coarse but the hair was full nevertheless um there was a bit of shedding initially and i'm saying initially because after i show you guys how i toned the hair the toning actually helped to soften up the hair for some reason and the shedding it pretty much stopped after i had cut the ends so as you're seeing here i'm not going through the weft i'm going under the weft and tying a knot at the end so at no point did i go through the weft itself 
I want to make sure that I went under to keep the integrity of the hair as best as possible. Um, just to make sure that I didn't add to any more potential shedding that could occur. So now I'm just lining up the track to the front of the closure, to the edge of the closure. So as you've seen, I've sewn a couple of layers thus far. I think at that time I had sewn in about three. And now I'm going ahead and I'm going to go from temple to temple with my stitching. Another thing that I really liked about this hair was that this hair did not come with any smell. You know, sometimes you get hair from AliExpress and it has a little bit of a funky smell. It did not have any smell. I just showed you how much space I like to put in between my tracks. I do kind of do big spacing in between my tracks. And that's just because when I do bobs, I don't like the hair to be too thick, too close together, too chunky. It's just not a good look because you don't want to be looking like DW. So now that all of the 14 inches sewn in, I'm going to go into sewing the 12 inch. And I'm there showing you like there was a little bit of shedding, but nothing much to speak of with the 12 inch. The 14 inch shed a little bit more than the 12 inch. I can say that. When it comes to doing bobs, I like to cut my shortest bundle in half. And that helps me manage how much hair I'm putting into the, um, the wig also. Because um, it kind of gives me like a guideline. I can see like, okay, am I using one and a half bundles? Am I using one and a quarter of a bundle? Um, when it comes to certain lengths. The bundles are definitely thick from root to tip. So it's not like the ends were straggly. That was not a thing. It was nice and full from root to tip, which again is another pro about this hair. And like I said, after toning and conditioning the hair, it got so smooth. So if you do purchase this hair, don't be discouraged if you find that it's a little bit rough in the beginning. I would recommend just doing a nice little deep condition, not with purple shampoo unless you're trying to get a toned look. And you'll see that a little bit later. If you like this yellow um, undertone to your blonde, I would say just deep condition it with some like Aussie Moist um, conditioner or Tresemme. Anything that's a white based conditioner, um, deep condition with that and it should soften up the hair. This hair, it does retail for the lengths that I got, um, $204.75, and that's Canadian pricing. Um, of course, it's going to be uh, way cheaper for um, American pricing. Probably would work out to be like $160 or something like that. Um, don't quote me on that. You might want to consult a Google conversion trends, um, that thingy, that little currency converter. Yeah, you might want to consult that bad boy. But overall, I don't think that's a bad price. I mean, getting 613 here is always going to be a little bit more pricey because I guess the companies have to do the processing for you. So it's a little bit more labor. So I think it's fair. Again, just lining up from temple to temple and use your t-pins to help keep your bundles in place um, I know when it gets to the more um, curved area of the head like the crown area sometimes you feel like your bundles will shift and move no problem just use your t-pin to hold it in place you want to do one at each end and one in the middle um, and don't worry guys I'll put a link in the description box to where I get T-pins from. You can buy them from your hair store or you can get them on AliExpress or um, Amazon. So I'll put a couple of links for you in case you don't find them at your local beauty supply store or if you don't have a local beauty supply store in your area. Once I've gotten to this point of the wig, 
I'm going to go ahead and change the way I sew. So I'm just showing you guys everything is pretty much lined up and full. There's not a lot of difference between the 14 and the 12 inch. Wait, I just completely realized, guys, I said this whole thing wrong. I did the 12 inch on the bottom and the 14 on the top. I just realized I said that to you guys. So my bad, my correction there. This is the 14 inch bundle that I'm stitching in at the top. The 12 inch went on the bottom. So that's how it's leveling up in terms of length and you're not seeing that layering effect. Now I'm just going ahead and I'm stitching pretty much from arch to arch, if that makes sense. I'm no longer going from temple to temple. I'm just stitching straight across now. And that's all going to line up in the end and help us close off our wig. So we've gone ahead, our wig is fully constructed, and now I'm going to cut out the inner portion of our dome cap. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a small pair of scissors and cut out in the center part. You want to be very careful, be mindful of where you stitch. You don't want to cut too close to where you stitch because sometimes um, the thread can get loose and then you'll start getting gaps and holes in your stitching around your closure. So just be very careful. And the inside of your wing should look like that. Now we're gonna tone our hair. So I'm just using 40 Volume Developer, the T18 Wella Color Charms. Um, you're gonna need some clips, a mixing bowl, a denim brush, a regular comb, and some black latex gloves. So to mix our toner, we're gonna use one part toner, empty out all the contents, and we're gonna do two parts 40 Volume Developer. So just fill up that bottle twice with the 40 Volume Developer. You can use 20 or 30 or even 10. I like using 40 because it just speeds up the process a whole lot quicker. Everybody is going to have their own way of how they like to do their toner. This is just how I like to do mine. So the way to know that you've mixed your toner correctly is that your solution is going to go from this white color to a purple color. So don't let this time lapse fool you. It does not take seconds for this part to happen. It took me about two and a half to three minutes of mixing in order for me to finally see that purple color come through. And once you see that full purple, you know that you, know that you have mixed your toner correctly. And then if you wanna mix some more, like say you wanna do two bottles of toner, then you'll pour two bottles of toner and then you'll do four bottles of the 40 volume developer, if that makes sense. Now, we're just gonna go ahead and start painting it onto the hair with our brush. So as you can tell, like it looks very clear a little bit. Um, it looks like kind of like an opaque purple, but it starts to get intense as the moments go by. Like it works pretty quickly and pretty soon you're gonna see just how purple it gets. Now, if you're trying to achieve the purple color you're about to see, I will like to tell you that just putting the toner on and leaving it on for long is not going to be the way to get that color because it does completely rinse out and just leave the tone color of blonde in the bottom or underneath, I should say. So this purple T18 um, toner is what's going to help create the base of a very silver platinum metallic blonde This 
because I'm here I'm showing you a little bit of a close-up of how purple it gets and there you guys see the hair is pretty purple from the toner in comparison to how yellow the 613 closure is so I'm just gonna go ahead and go in and start toning out our closure a little of um, a little advice in terms of toning your hair I want to let you guys know um, people have different interpretations of how long you should keep toner on there's different recommendations for how long you should process the hair for because the hair is already processed I'm gonna be very real with you guys I kept this toner on for about I want to say I kept this toner on for maybe two hours and it didn't break off the hair it didn't make the hair any more um, like sheddy it did not add to the shedding of the hair like I said once I toned the hair this is when the hair actually started to get very nice feeling it got pretty um, silky and smooth feeling once I had toned the hair I don't know if that's due to the toner i don't know if it's due to how long i left the developer and the toner on i'm not gonna tell you guys to go ahead and leave it on for as long as i did but this is just the method that had worked for me so i'm deciding to share that with you guys of course do everything on your own discretion if you're a beginner um i would suggest just leaving it on for maybe half hour and see how you feel because you can always go back in and tone like once the hair dries you can dry it with a blow dryer or you can air dry it once the hair dries you can always go back in and tone it that's not a problem now this wig process this was days honey like i had constructed the wig and toned it in one day left it to air dry turned around and um added color on it <laughs> the next day which i'll be showing you that step shortly so you see here this is after it was air dried i kind of blow dried it out a little bit straighter it's still pretty silver and it has little um tints of purple in there but i wanted it to be more grayish bluish purplish <laughs> And so uh, that's the dye that I use. I'll put the name of the dye in the description box down below. I use two bottles. I just poured out the content in my mixing bowl. Um, all I did was brush it into the closure, but everything else I just poured the dye all over, rubbed it in, and wrapped it in this garbage bag. I also put some purple shampoo, um, sorry, purple conditioner in it, left it overnight, and washed it out the next day to get the final color that you guys see. And here we finally have it. It's platinum gray. I've already gone ahead and I flat ironed everything. I put bio silk in there so the hair is fleeky. Now I'm just going in and I'm doing my cut for my blunt bob. Now you're gonna see I am like such an eyeballer when it comes to doing cuts. So you're gonna see I even end up cutting it a little bit shorter as I made my way around to the other side but it's okay because i went ahead and i corrected that cut in the very end so i'm just going around with my shears taking my time and um trying to make the cut as precise and blunt as possible So as you see here, nothing is like lined up, but I'm just going to go ahead and fix that now. I know some people use clippers um, or like barber shears. I just use regular like sheer scissors that I got from the hair store. I think these are like Annie brand. They were like 10 bucks. This is what I use to create my cuts. And it happens to work for me. I guess this is working harder, not smarter, because, you know, the barber shears are a little bit quicker. But this is what works for me. So now I'm just going to go on my flat iron, 
I'm just gonna slightly bump the ends a little bit and there you have it guys that is everything that is the step-by-step -step as to how I created this platinum blonde gray bluish <laughs> color wig um, if you guys enjoyed this video and you guys want more like it definitely give this video a thumbs up make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later with another one Make sure to check the description box for all the details on the hair products, um, the information from Ali Queen Hair, and all the items used in the video. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!